All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me start here. <laughs> issue by issue, there's a lot to discuss, so let's start with their criteria, ladies and gentlemen, for how to elect a politician. Given that they represent all the alternatives, i.e. all the most corrupt people in the nation, I wouldn't listen to their criteria, nor would I to do the barge poll or anything else if you're getting my drift, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so coming, but let's, let's talk about some of the things that we talked about. We talked about the candidate that we were elected to the presidency needs to have a track record that is respectable and that we can put our vote behind. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of talk at the start of this debate of, oh, he isn't corrupt, we know he isn't corrupt, but this side of the house, we have caught up and said, but how do you know he won't be corrupt in the future? Well, how do you know that your future government won't be corrupt in the future? Do you have a crystal ball? No, we don't. All right? We don't have a crystal ball, and neither do you. And as a result of which, this debate has to boil down to if we can support Imran Khan and vote on Imran Khan given the current evidence that we have right now. Six months from now, we might vote for somebody different. But right now, as it stands, we believe Imran Khan is the best alternative that exists currently within our system. This is part of our stance. This is part of our definition. And we should listen. So, no thank you. So, let me return the favor there. So, <laughs> in terms of his... It, 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 there was an elaborate line, which was, oh, there's a track record of anticipatory future, blah, 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 which basically means, which basically means if, if he's done something in the past and it's good, you can sort of project it forward, but you only project it so far forward, right? We said the guy isn't corrupt. His retort to that is, the guy couldn't control four people in the Pakistani cricket team. To which, no thank you. To which we asked, we asked, did he have knowledge of, of that corruption? No, he didn't. He probably didn't, was this was this side's retort. But let's give you an example of what happens on the exact same issue when he does have knowledge of what's going on. This recent player scandal where everything blew up and there was plenty of evidence for everybody to see. What was his line? Was his line to the front of the rug? No, it wasn't. He said, jail these guys. Try them in Pakistan. Get rid of these bombs. Go in front of the person and ask them again. But that's leading by example. You can't expect them to not know something but still take action on it. It doesn't make sense. Walk on water, Obama, and you're a plus man. <laughs> Yet, and that's why he's not corrupt. But we told you that people have donated billions to show that the Jagat Khan Memorial Hospital. In a country of political theories and political conspiracies, ladies and gentlemen, some PBB idiots should have been able to come up with one instance in which he pocketed some of that money. Nothing, ladies and gentlemen. And what does that mean? That means he's squeaky clean. And what does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? That means I give my vote. Do you know why? Because I trust with my money, along with millions of other people that have donated as well. That's track record. That's something that their candidates don't have. They haven't named an alternative. All they've talked to you about is some crummy coalition. But let's move on to the next. No, thanks. So, let's move on to the alternatives, ladies and gentlemen. Benazir Bhutto, risen from the grave, clearly. <laughs> Towards the right trajectory, ladies and gentlemen. How about a degree, a dual degree from Oxford, ladies and gentlemen, to Walford, I'm sure, in politics and economics. Two things uh, that are relevant to the presidency, but thank you. So, <clears throat> having said that now, we've dealt with the issue of controlling hundreds versus the few by explaining to you that when he has the knowledge, he's willing to act. He's for a free and open judiciary, which means the guy believes in justice. Alright? And that's another reason why I vote for him. Because anybody that believes in justice in a country full of corrupt individuals and is willing to be accountable to somebody else and say, in a fair court of law, I am ready to step in, and you should too. Because you need to be proud of what you do, and that's his step. Because you need to be proud of your actions, and you well, need to be... No, thank you. Anyway, so, we gave you a bunch of other issues that are part of his manifesto. Promoting education, for some reason they had a problem with that. Building dams, they had nothing to say about that, of course. China policy. They said, no, we should keep the United States close to us. They love us. They're going to nurture us. They're going to help us get out of this situation. The last 10 years, all they've done is brought economic doom on this country, ladies and gentlemen. Where were we before this war on terror started? And where are we now, ladies and gentlemen? And who's the determining factor? U.S. intervention was. Now, I'm not saying get rid of the United States. Neither is Iran Khan. Iran Khan is saying distance them and respect our own sovereignty. If any other ally is claiming that they will do that, but doesn't do that in principle, they're of no worth to us. And that's his stance, and that's my stance, and that's why I'm going to my goddamn vote. So thank you. Now, as far as, 
as far as minority representation, this is the incredible dichotomy of today, ladies and gentlemen. What is it? It's that these guys come up here and say, <coughs> we can't give our vote to a guy who doesn't have anybody in their cabinet. Okay? Doesn't have any representative. Who's going to run foreign policy? Who's going to run fiscal policy? Blah, blah, blah. Ha, ha, ha. So, what do, we, what do we come to? Is that there's still spots available in his cabinet to cover different areas. And then they come up and say, oh, no, no, no. But be careful. There's no minority representation in his cabinet because there's no minorities in there in the first place. Well, hold on a second. There's open slots already, and uh, clearly you guys have a crystal ball out, and you already know that no minorities are going to come into those seats, or else you would have made that argument in the first place. But we've already covered the crystal ball, and both of you sit down right now. So, having said that, well, we talked about alternatives, right? And we talked about whether Ishaq should be president, or whether Demur should be president. And I think we covered that adequately. But all I'll say is that all of the other candidates they've mentioned don't have a degree in, in politics and economics from Oxford. And as far as their coalition goes, are we really going to bring back the state for rough idiots that got us for the first place? I mean, are those the guys on economics? And we just don't have this long speech about circular debt and everything else. Got into the circular debt situation in the first place. Was it Iran constantly taking policy that got us into the circular debt situation? Maybe it was his favorite Benazir Bhutto or is it from the debt that got us into that situation, ladies and gentlemen? I know one thing for sure. He's got a different perspective on how to do things. I'm not saying that perspective is right. I said I'm willing to give him a chance. That's what I'm saying. So, okay. so <laughs> that, that, that's exactly what we're getting at. So, and on character assassination, oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is my favorite. They said, yeah, the guy's not a really good guy. He left his wife for the country and came back to Pakistan to fight for the people of Pakistan. That's not the kind of guy that we'd like in office. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the picture of the man right behind you sitting there with his two dogs and a cigarette in his mouth was the founder of this country. He drank, ladies and gentlemen, and he gambled and he also played billiards for money. But that didn't make him a bad politician, ladies and gentlemen. And by no means so far did we declare that Imran Khan personally is a bad guy. And, and again, they're conjecturing, oh, but what about in the future? Again, I come back to that. If you have the crystal ball, show it to me. God damn it, I'll pay good money for it. But I don't have one right now. And unless you have one, you can show it to me. I can't tell you. I can only vote based on the evidence that is in front of me today on the status quo. And currently, as far as the status quo is concerned, he's doing a pretty good job. Allowing the PDP to come back in. All right, my last issue is mass appeal. Does Ram Khan have mass appeal? Again, he conceded. He's still early on in his mission. That's why he has an empty cabinet. So how can you ask for mass appeal before he has a cabinet in place? But on the subject of mass appeal, let's give you that same conjecture, that same trajectory, ladies and gentlemen. 136 people in one place at a political rally in Lahore. From that, what can we, tra what trajectory can we take, ladies and gentlemen? The trajectory that we can take for that, ladies and gentlemen, was that that rally comprised of members of every single demographic group, demographic group in the country, and therefore everybody from every single demographic group in this country is willing to listen to what he has to say, which is the first step towards building a strong cabinet and bringing on strong allies. Do you know what the other, the other step is? It's to make sure that everybody that you're bringing on board has a squeaky clean record. It's called being selective, something that their candidates don't know anything about. They'll take any idiot into their cabinet, just as long as they promise them 10%. He's saying you have to have credentials, you have to have a track record. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that sounds like the kind of guy that I'd like running my ship if I could be captain myself. And whether or not I'd make it to the president or not, is a completely different story. Alright? So, on, on all of those grounds, ladies and gentlemen, given that my time is up, thank you very much.